So I see a lot of comments online about people sort of curious uh, what to do with their new orchid they just got for uh, a holiday, or maybe they, they saw a beautiful flower uh, at the grocery store and they bought it, and now they have it home and they're trying to take care of it. Uh, and you know, some brands um, recommend like adding ice, for example, um, but there are better ways um, you can take care of your orchid in order for it really um, to thrive. And so um, this video is just going to talk about really how to repot uh, a Phalaenopsis orchid, which is the most common orchid in the United States that uh, at least I see in the Northeast at like grocery stores, home improvement stores, and places like that. Um, so I'll take you through the process of how to repot it because whenever you get um, a new plant from the store, um, th those are sort of grown under mass production conditions. And so uh, they really pack in the potting medium very tightly and it retains a lot of water. Um, and so uh, if you don't get rid of that, sometimes it can lead to really um, eventually a plant that will decline and die. Um, and so once enjoy the flowers while you have it, but then when it's done flowering, um, you can leave the spike on and repot it. Uh, you have the orchid in bloom. It will, uh, you know, continue to bloom for a couple months, but then uh, these blooms will all fall off and you'll be left with the stalk here. And you'll see on this other orchid that as it, this it was the original bloom stalk, all the blooms came off and then we left this on and it actually stayed green. And you'll see that it re-bloomed one flower stalk here. This is now quite old. It's getting ready to bloom again. And, and same on this side here. This other orchid, same thing, we left this stalk on and you see it's branching off. It's branching off here as well. And then it's also growing a totally new flower spike over here. Sometimes the stalks will just go completely brown all the way down at the base. And if that's the case, then you'll wanna snip it as close to the crown uh, down here as you can. And uh, that will ensure that you get rid of any possibility of root rot, uh, continuance of disease, etc. So next, I'll do a quick uh, review of the two main kinds of orchids that you come across, point out some key uh, anatomical features uh, of those orchids, uh, and then we'll proceed to the repot. So there are two main uh, types of uh, orchids uh, with basically two different kinds of growth habits. You have your monopodial orchids and you have your sympodial orchids. Monopodials have a sing single central stem and they grow one leaf at a time, shown like that, emerging from the crown and continuing to grow up. So these will put on about, you know, two leaves or so a year. Uh, these are, uh, they come in epiphytic form, so they grow on top of trees. So you'll see them potted in bark a lot of times. They really like airy roots. And the way they bloom is they send off a flower spike from the stem off like you see here. You have sympodial types, which grow sort of like through underground branching rhizome. So you have a suitable here. There's a one branching off here at a new node at the bottom, pushing out roots. And this one's actually climbing kind of up in a spiral. So it's coming to the back and then coming back to the forward to the center of the pot here, you see a small new suitable growing. So this is this one just finished blooming and now it's growing out this new one. It'll bloom and then when it's done blooming, it'll shoot out another one. So it kind of crawls along a surface, whereas this would tend to hang. So they're not all epiphytics. You know, there certainly are plenty of orchids um, that you know live in the ground, uh, for example, um, that would be described as monopodial or sympodial. It just depends. Uh, but today we'll be talking about repotting a Phalaenopsis monopodial recently from the store. In my video today, I'm going to be repotting an orchid that is a keiki. When I say keiki, I mean that on a Phalaenopsis orchid like this, sometimes where you have nodes that grow out new roots or new flowering stems, those nodes, um, they're basically, you know, stem cells, right? So sometimes uh, they can be differentiated into a flower stalk and, or sometimes they will just sort of go into root tissue. Now, when a parent orchid is very stressed uh, or if it's really mature, um, but usually it's a signal of stress, uh, they can produce what's called a keiki, which is an asexual clone. Those clones can grow off of nubbins down at the base, uh, but they can also, at every node along a flower stem, if it's not uh, differentiated yet to become a flower, it can actually revert uh, into uh, a keiki. So it'll grow a new 
plant. So you'll see tiny little leaves growing and also roots will start growing from there. Those can be snapped off and divided. The plant I'm gonna be repotting, you'll see in a moment, uh, started off as a keiki uh, on the base of a plant uh, that was uh, very severely dehydrated uh, with very little roots and uh, really um, was on the cusp of death within a, a probably uh, a couple weeks. So this is the plant here. Uh, the main plant was really severely dehydrated. Uh, I tried to save it, but was unsuccessful. But there was a small keiki on the side of it. Um, and I, I basically put that into some sphagnum moss shown here. This is the original pot that I did that in. Um, I just put some moss uh, down in there. So that uh, really holds on to water really well. And you see there's lots of really uh, nice green roots there and uh, is recently pushing some fresh new roots. And this will eventually, you know, be as big as the one behind it uh, shown there. So it's getting there. So an important thing about uh, repotting your orchid, now obviously I'm doing one that's been growing in terracotta, but if you had uh, one from the store, it would be in a, a, a sort of flimsy plastic pot. Um, and uh, really it would be probably easier to get it out of that than getting it out of this. So more or less the same. You always want to have a nice clean uh, work surface uh, and so I have already washed this uh, and treated it with um, a bactericide, fungicide, algae side, like just sort of uh, you know chemical component uh, to clean and get rid of all viruses or any fungus that might be here uh, and then um, I will sort of continually clean it as I go through just to make sure I rem maintain sterile conditions because orchids um, can be very sensitive to um, sort of infections and passing infections, especially between plants. And when you have a lot of plants, you got to clean. I'm also going to have, I have some pre-sterilized, uh, cut nice clean cutters, which will be always cleaned uh, in between uh, plants. I have some potting mix. And I have the, the potting mix here sitting in some rainwater. You could also use distilled water. Uh, but either way, uh, you want to make sure it's a very clean water because the stuff in the tap can sometimes contain too much um, mineral content uh, for the orchid. Um, this you can make yourself with bark and pieces uh, of LECA, uh, like a clay material. Um, you also have uh, some uh, more material in here for uh, sort of airiness. I buy this pre-mixed because I'm lazy, but it's pretty good. It's really high quality sphagnum moss. Uh, which, you know, is very good for the orchid, keeps them nice and hydrated, but also if it's a really open mix, so it uh, allows it to dry out uh, quickly um, enough so that you really avoid any kind of like sitting water uh, that can cause rot or bacteria to grow. Quick reminder that it is important to have recently watered your orchid. You want the roots to be um, moist, um, you know, freshly watered. I watered this yesterday. Um, you just want them to not be totally dry because they're more uh, delicate uh, when they are dry. So do that before you begin any repotting. So I'm going to be um, tipping this upside down and uh, gently tugging on it to try and pull it out of the pot. I'll also use a utensil to get in between the sphagnum and the wall here. Sometimes um, orchid roots really like to adhere to terracotta, um, so I'll try and be careful to not break anything. Uh, but we got to get it out of the pot um, in order to inspect the roots, uh, maybe uh, snip off any dead ones, and I'll spray it with hydrogen peroxide so that it's um, you know, nice and clean before we pot it up, um, just to make sure that no, no infection can get started. And if there is an infection, to nip it in the bud before it proceeds. But I don't suspect there'll be any issues because it's a small pot, it's terracotta, it breathes really well, uh, and um, the leaves just are nice and uh, very, very, very firm and just glossy and really happy. So I think it'll be good once we get in there. Okay, so I'm just going to gently be using a utensil to pull away from the side of the pot. Like that, I hear a little crunch, so I'll probably just snap a root, but that will be fine. There should be plenty of roots. And actually, before I get too invasive here, it's always good to see, sometimes it will just pop out. So I'm gonna turn it upside down, wiggle back and forth, gently pull, oh yeah, yay. That was wonderful. You see this pot has lots of algae growing on it. In general, it's okay. It's only on the outside that has algae. The inside looks good. Um, the medium definitely is beginning to break down a bit. But you see how happy, like the roots look so good. Um, when you get these from the store, um, you know, and you're just taking it out for the first time, because you have a plant that has been grown under a, a nursery setting, uh, it is going to sometimes have a plug in the center, like really compacted. You see, this is very uh, light and I can just 
pull it like that and it starts falling out. Um, but when you have one from the store, it's going to be very packed. And so you have to be patient and just go through and pull it off. If it's really packed in there, you might have to get tweezers. But here, see there's very few pieces of bark. We got the moss in here. This was that long fiber moss. I have a few dead roots, but that's okay. You'll probably have a lot of them, it's fine. As long as you have root tissue, which is showing it nice and green at the top, that means it's alive, it's photosynthetic. Uh, it's actually making sugar and food for the plant. And also be the, you have nice, firm, white, uh, you know, if you touch it, you feel like you could break it, um, roots, which means it's very happy. But you'll sometimes have sort of squishy looking roots. And if you're uncertain, you pull on it, see, it just snapped right off. Um, that is very common. And if it uh, doesn't snap off right away, you'll, if you pull on it, you see there's a little string that comes through. Uh, that's the center of the root. Uh, the outside portion is called the velamen. So you want really plump velamen, um, which means that it's nice and healthy. And um, if not, you wanna snip off that material. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off and then show you, and then kick it to the sink and spray it with some water uh, to get off all the little bits, and then we'll come back. Here's the baby out of the pot, out of the sink, been rinsed off. We have some new roots growing at the bottom. So good time to repot, have a nice fresh root to grow into the medium. The roots look pretty good. There are a few problem areas. So there's some a uh, piece of a rotted root. You see that the root has branched and is still quite, quite healthy. So I will snip off that little bit. We have another problem area on the back side here. We'll want to get in there and snip that bit off too. But otherwise, pretty healthy roots. And if you see any roots like that, just get in there and take a snip. Before I show you the snipping process, I am going to spray down uh, the orchid and the bench area here with some hydrogen peroxide just to make sure that everything is nice and sterile. This is your hydrogen peroxide uh, from the store, 3%. Put a squirter in it, good to go. Uh, I've also cleaned the surface with 5CN20 just to make sure it's nice and clean. Hydrogen peroxide, it's just going to react with any bacteria, viruses, other things like that on the surface of the orchid and it's going to kill it. And when it kills it, it's then going to down degrade into water and oxygen. It's not gonna hurt. The plant one little bit but it is going to be nice and sterile and if you get really close and get quiet you can almost hear the fizzing so I'll let that sit for 10 minutes and cook away and then I'll come back and begin the repotting okay just want to show you how I'm gonna snip here Got my pruning tools freshly cleaned with the 5 sand 20. Um, you want them just to be sterile so you don't transmit any diseases. And you just wanna come in here and you wanna make sure that where you're cutting, you're not cutting into dead tissue. You wanna cut where it's still green. Um, I don't wanna cut that root, so I'm gonna come right here. Just like that. Snip it off. It looks like I might have a little bit of issue in there. Um, hopefully that doesn't spread. Um, I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of um, the Fisan 20 here, just to make sure that it doesn't turn into anything nasty. Okay. And this has plenty of roots on it. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and snip that again but I'm gonna repot it into a clear pot. I'll be able to see if anything goes wrong and I can take corrective action. But for now, I'm gonna leave that because uh, I think that otherwise it's a pretty healthy looking root. And I just got the one more thing to snip on the other side. And this one, same deal. We wanna get down here and cut, you know, below where it's still green. And there we had a nice clean cut, very green tissue. Small root, got the bad guy gone now. So I have my pot here, it's also clean and sterilized. I'm gonna take that potting mix that I showed you earlier here, and I'm gonna make sure I have some sphagnum on the bottom. I like to put that in first. 
can also make watering easier if you want. Um, add, uh, you know, have your drip tray and you put in water and then it'll soak up into the sphagnum and then that will sort of diffuse um, through capillary action really um, up into the potting mix. And um, that's one way to water it kind of quickly. I prefer just to soak mine. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna put it just a little bit in the bottom there and then I'm going to take the orchid and position it in the pot to make sure all the roots are sort of in, in a good place. Just wanna gently tuck them in on the other side as well. Just, it's about the same size as the previous pot, so they fit in pretty, pretty well. Um, it's upright, it's, I can like wobble it. It's okay if yours is maybe more leaning to the side, just get it as, you know, well positioned in there as possible. You also don't want, you don't want to bury it too high and you also want to bury it too low. So I'm going to aim to really try and get this in because you want this, the medium to come up to just below um, this leaf, you want it to be sort of at that level because um, any new roots will push out and then get down into the medium. So you want it, the medium to be kind of near there. It'll also increase the relative humidity around the base of the plant, which will make it a little bit happier. I'm gonna take your pot and just go ahead and you gently pack in with your fingers into the holes here, the gaps in between the roots, your med medium. Medium's been pre-wet with Distilled or rainwater, I use rainwater. Just don't push it too hard, just take your time. It's a good sort of zen meditative moment. Okay, be patient. And all you gotta do is focus on getting every little piece snug down in there, creating a nice moist environment for the roots to be happy. Now what I'm gonna also make sure I do is uh, I'm not gonna like really pack it in there super hard. You know, I want it to be uh, snug enough to hold the plant. I should be able to, I should be able to hold the phalaenopsis by the crown and let the pot uh, be held on to by the force of being held in there. That's not the case yet. So I've still got some work to do. I want it to be nice and airy and open. You don't wanna compress it too much because one, if you compress it, you can damage the roots. And two, if you compress it, really what can happen is um, there's not enough airflow down there. It's too packed in. That's really how um, the orchids arrive when you get them from the um, grocery store. You know, too packed in there. Um, which if you've just repotted it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to stop the video here. Then I'll turn it back on when I'm near the end. So here I am now done. I have the orchid here. Can just barely hold it in the pot. It clings to the pot. I, I don't want to pack it any tighter because I do want those roots to stay nice and uh, airy in there and be able to to breathe. The slots will help with that. But I like that I can see the roots. Oh, I can see they're nice and green in there. They're going to photosynthesize and make some sugar for the plant. I have a nice open mix again from Repot Me. Again, you can make this yourself, but um, I like it better than just the bark. Um, because um, it holds on to a little bit uh, more moisture uh, and I don't have to water the phalaenopsis as often. Um, really, I think they need much more water than just three ice cubes a week and anyways. Um, this plant did not evolve in a place that has um, ice, so uh, naturally occurring in the environment. So with orchids, uh, they are happiest when you mimic uh, the environment from which um, their genetics says, hey, this is how I'm supposed to grow. They grow in warm climates. They like lots of relative humidity. They get rained on a lot. Um, their roots are exposed to air and trees, um, sort of under uh, in shaded areas and canopies and things like that. So, you know, you really want to try and mimic that. So I think we've done that. A final note is the plant's still quite moist uh, from uh, my sterilization procedure. We do not want ever, 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 ever to let any water sit right there on the top of the crown because that can lead to crown rot. Um, and it can be uh, tricky to save the plant. So you can either use a paper towel or a napkin to dab in there to make sure it's nice and um, dry, 
or um, actually I just blow really hard on there, kind of like uh, a pressure washer, just blowing the, the water out. <sighs> it's silly, uh, but you can just blow it out. Um, and that way I know I can force out every little bit of water from in there and make sure that it's dry. Um, if, there's, if you're not able to just blow it out, which I think blowing out is the best way because sometimes you can't even get the, the paper in there. The nooks and crannies are so small. So get it out all the water and then uh, place it back in your east facing window and it will be super duper happy.